this made in America. It's out to Columbus, Ohio, where Franklin Art Class puts the art in glass. So sit back and relax, because we've got it made in America. In this nation of immigrants, American cities don't get much more all-American than Columbus, Ohio. So it's no surprise that just south of downtown, a historic district called German Village is a touch of the old world in the midst of the modern one. Which, come to think of it, describes Franklin Art Glass. The state's largest working glass studio has been in German Village since it was considered the rough part of town 40 years ago. Of course, the Franklin story didn't begin then. This family-owned company was founded in 1924 by Elmore Health, the son of a prominent stained glass artist. His son, Jim, is the company's chief executive. At that time, there was five studios in Columbus, Ohio. The other four are all gone now. They didn't make it through the Depression. My father barely made it through. Stained glass isn't exactly a necessity. So during the Depression, business was painfully slow, with the emphasis on painful. But Elmore persevered, keeping Franklin in business and helping it to flourish. After serving his country in the Army Air Corps, Jim Helf took over the company in 1945. Later, when a new burger shop called Wendy's opened in Columbus, it was Franklin that Wendy's called to give its light a special hue. Well, we did lampshades for Wendy's when they first originated in Columbus. Wendy's started here. We ended up, we made between 40 and 45,000 oh. Tiffany style shades in Wendy's. The helps keep Franklin all in the family. Jim's son Gary took over daily operations in 1971 and became company president. Now, typically, who are your customers, Gary? Our customer would be any homeowner who wants colored glass. It could be a church, it could be a restaurant, commercial building, anybody who wants stained glass in any form. Every Franklin window is custom made. All you need is an idea, maybe even a picture. Almost anything is possible since they have at least a thousand colors and textures of glass. Comes in almost any color you can think of. See, you don't, uh, here in Ohio, you don't really worry about earthquakes, do you? No, no earthquakes. No, we don't worry about earthquakes. We don't. Franklin doesn't make the glass that goes into the windows. It's supplied by vendors like Wismach Glass, located down the road in Payton City, West Virginia. This glass-making region is a good place to start a lesson in one of man's oldest art forms. Is that a blue? Oh, yeah, it is. Look at that. All glass looks black. That's one thing that stained glass needs is light. Of course, they always say in the church, the greatest light's God's light, and that's why stained glass is in a lot of churches. This called water glass has a shimmer to it. What is that? What's the stock number? I want, I want a piece, a stained glass window with a lot of that in we it. We call it 136W. Okay, 136W. <laughs> When we come back to Made in America, in Franklin Art Glass, human hands accomplish what no machine could. Welcome back to Franklin Art Glass, where windows begin broken and end beautiful. The first step in making a stained glass window is to create a design. Once it's approved, it's transferred onto a page that would look at home in a coloring book. From there, the design is traced onto pattern paper by designers like Kara. Basically, you take a large piece of pattern paper the size of your drawing, and then you take carbon paper and you put it underneath the entire drawing. You have to redraw your entire design again. Can I help? Sure. This is very calming, isn't it? Yes, it is. It really is. It's almost like uh, pottery. Well, I've been here 17 years, so it must be doing something for me, huh? Besides paying the bills, yeah. <laughs> Remember how paint by the numbers could turn anyone into Rembrandt? Each piece has a number. So all of these are going to be numbered, so you know how to put it back together. A pair of special shears trips a sixteenth of an inch from each piece to allow for the lead strip that will hold everything together. The pieces are then taken to the glass cutters. If you're used to big factories, you notice right away something missing in this one noise. 
there are no big machines. It turns out that glass is cut and pieced together the old-fashioned way. In fact, really old-fashioned, centuries old. That's the trick, be able to cut them so you cut a bunch of them and the pattern and the glass are exactly just like that pattern. They all look like they're cut by a machine or they're cut by sure. human hand. A tiny wheel in the tool scores the glass so it can be more easily broken where it's supposed to break. Ott has been doing this for 20 years. Okay, start here. Is that right? Yeah. See the noise? You have to make a noise like that. If you don't hear it, they won't break one day. Look at that. I could do this all day long. Now the pieces take shape for what's meant to be the first and forever time when they're joined by lead. John, all the pieces are cut, and then we have our glazing drawing, our drawing that we created in the art department, and we assemble each piece by hand on the lead lines we created in the art department. So who bends the lead? Is that you? Yeah. You're the lead bender. Yeah. Every piece then is put in there and cut by hand. He uses a special glazing knife, we call yeah. it. And it's a little trick to cut the lead because you don't want to smash it. You just want to cut it down smooth. If you oh. press too hard, it'll smash the lead. The lead is soldered at the joints and some further weather protection is added. There's a waterproofer going between the lead and the glass. That also sets up and gets real hard. And then if the window is real large, you can put reinforcing bars on it, or we can oh. insulate the window, making two pieces of glass on both sides so the window can't go anywhere else. Like everything exposed to the elements 24-7, stained glass windows eventually begin to show their age. Restoring them to their original glory is where Bob Rowe comes in. This is reconstructive surgery, and it means literally that. Taking a window apart and putting it back together, piece by piece, after a little TLC. This craft is primarily learned by doing. And you, you know, you just, as your skills grow, you get offered different opportunities, and it's worked well for me. I love what I do. Franklin is one of those places where everyone, it seems, loves their work. Take Mike Wapham, for example. After firing, he applies paint to the glass, then scrapes it off to create ways for light to dance through images and make them appear three-dimensional. This is art, not science. Is there any similarity there, Mike? You see any uh, not little much. gnomish quality? Well, maybe a little whimsical quality about it. That's the great thing about stained glass. It can be solemn or whimsical. Sometimes, both. Yeah, the 136W, I, I know where it is. Couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs>